Welcome back to Tineas. I'm Rob and today we're back here in our testing facility on Mars. As you can see, our rockets have been removed. The reason for this is because of the newly released update for the rockets, which means that the original rockets which took 3x3 space no longer can exist in the normal build of a game. You can, however, remove them if you want to, so you can actually save your build. But doing this uh, requires some fiddling in Steam. Um, but yeah, you can do it if you want to. Now, over here, I've built the first thing you need for the rockets, which is the manufacturer. The manufacturer works as a normal manufacturer, in-feed, out-feed, and so on. You pop in stuff like I have in steel in here, you can see what you can build. <clears throat> so you have the, the different things in here that you can choose, some of them you need, some of them you don't. There's a lot of things. And we're going through, we can go through most of them today. We're going to build two rockets and send up to space, hopefully, <laughs> if you don't have a crash and burn. But at least we're going to build them. So I've, what I've done, first of all, is I've built the four different engines that are in the game currently. Who knows, it might be changed. This one, the pumped gas, which you can see has one inlet for gas or fuel and one for data is the most common one. It's the most easy one, I would say. Then you have one that can have two uh, gas inlets, so you can mix on the fly. And then you have for liquid. I don't touch liquid because liquid currently is a bit, I find it a bit troubling. It can blow up and stuff. So to start off with these new rockets, you will think, hey, this is the, the, this is the rocket. Well, you need to build this one. And to do this, well, in here, you have something called launch so launch mount is what you need and a launch mount when it comes out looks like this looks huge when you hold it up but in fact this that was here was the old base a three by three and this is what you need for a new one now you need to have three uh, four frames here you don't need anything here or here or, yeah in those Four corners inside, but you definitely need here on the side, here on the, the, the side of it. So you need the, the holding foundation for it. So to build it, you build in two stages, which requires steel. So it's quite cheap actually, compared to before. It doesn't take a lot. First, the first first thing, screwdriver. <clears throat> then you have the first step. Then you need a drill. Where is the drill? Here. And you drill it up. Done. Lovely. Your first thing first. And this is the only time where I'll be using tools. Otherwise, I'll be using my magic wand here. So now that you have built the frame, you will say, hey, I, why can't I build it? Well, as you can see in the text, it says it needs to be built inside an engine fuselage. And what the heck is an engine fuselage, you'll say? Well, these are fuselage. They are, there's four, four kinds. A, B, C, D. <laughs> they all are identical in terms of what they do. They all have the same in size. It's just the aesthetics, so that the, the visual, they are different. They come with four uh, engine mount, so at the, the bottom, so A1 to A4. Then you have the cylinder, which is the, the main part of the rocket. Again, you have four, so A4 to A1. And then you have the cone, the top. Or the fairing, as they say it. Uh, but the cone, and again here you have two. You have three technically, but the, the, the shape wise, is, is, there's only two. The, the visual will then change. So, But you can choose to mix them as you want to. I'm going to use all four, at least for this rocket. So we're going to take, we're going to take the A1 as the, as the bottom part so for, the, for, the, for the engine. And we can do, let's say, we, we do we do A2, just for fun. We take our engine, pop them inside. Now let's build both of them. There we are. Done. And let's put away this one. As you can see, it has the fuel there, and there's power data here. So now that we have the base ready, we need to build the, 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 the tube, the actual rocket. So we can take, let's say, we can take D, and let's say we're just going to pop one D here. And let's take a B, why not? And pop it onto the top. And we can do a round one or a shape, or a pointy one. It doesn't really matter. Inside is the same. 
So let's put him as a as this, so it doesn't look so aggressive. What we need from this point is, of course, we need fuel, power. We need whatever this rocket needs to do. In this particular case, it's a scanner, so we need a scanning device. Then we need something to control with, so something avionics to control with. And we need a link to Earth, or to the to the planet, to our base, which is called a data link or uplink. And these things are here. So first things first, let's take the avionics. The avionics itself is a little tiny box, you see, very small. It doesn't matter where you put it on the rocket. I personally like to have it up the top because that's where it technically should be, I guess. Uh, you can put anything as long as it's green. If you see, as soon as I'm on the edge, it'll say it needs to be inside. Now, we put it here. Now, the next thing is we're going to take a data link. Now, there's two data links. We need two. One is going to be on the, on, on the rocket itself, and one is going to be on the ground. So, you're going to place the one on the ground here. Doesn't matter where you place it. Let's build him. Looks at this, nothing fancy. You can pick here, you can pick which rocket that you want to connect to. Then we'll take the other one, pop him inside. Again, he's quite small. Again, doesn't matter where you place him, as long as he's inside. He doesn't need to be any more built, he is fully built as soon as you have put him in. The Ivanix need to be a little bit built, two stages, but just remember it, otherwise he won't fly anywhere. Next thing we take is our fuel. The fuel we can put inside here, and we just need him to be reasonably close to this outlet or inlet. Then we have a scanner. So a scanner is what will be scanning ores in space. And we're gonna pop him next to the rocket fuel. Next to the rocket fuel. He he needs to be built as well. Like so. You see he has a he has a button. And the cable in it. The cable in it is the only one that's actually important. The button is not for for us here on, on Earth, on on Mars, of course. You need to add a head to it so it can scan. The head has a durability, so you need to be able to replace it sometimes. Next thing is some batteries. Now, bear in mind. Let's put them down again. Bear in mind, we need to place it now in a way so we can actually get this one out. And we need to get the power out as well. So let's first, before we build the batteries, let's build the cabling inside. Or the pipe inside, at least. So I use insulated pipes. Because we are in space. Cable. I don't know if it has any effect, but I assume that it can get a bit colder there. So I want the temperature to stay as it was on the planet on the base so it doesn't freeze because we don't want anything to freeze while it's up there and let's see we want this uh -huh -huh. great so pipes and cables are done then we need to put in batteries. We need. I, I'm going to place two sets of batteries inside this one, and I want it to be. It's a bit difficult to see, but that is the outgoing. And that is the ingoing, incoming. So we want cable again. That is not what I want to do. Okay, well, I want to cable this up. There we are. And then we want a umbilical cord mm, here, I think. Well, what was that he said? Umbilical cord, what is that? Well, it's basically a belly button. In a very weird way to say it. So umbilical cord are these things. There's also one for liquid, but we don't have liquid in our, in our rocket, so we don't need them. This is for power, and this is for gas. The power we need for our batteries, and the gas, of course, for the fuel. So with these umbilical cords, we're going to place them so we can access them. We're going to place one here, with an angle 
Let's see, get it correctly here. Come on. Oh yeah. So he will then be able to let's grab some cable here. To connect to this one and to the other side. And then from here popping out a wire here. We need another one for the gas, so we're gonna pop the building code for the gas just here. Like so. And uh, let's pipe him up. And that is a finished rocket. In theory, we need some fuel to him, of course, and some power. But other than that, he's finished. And what we need now is called a launch tower, which looks like this. It's a weird shape, you can say, but that one is not for a person, but it's for the filling of the rocket. So we take our gas, and say we have the gas here at this section and seems like right yep so this one looks like so now the next one is the power but you can see the power is on the side and he is on the on the middle if i build another one here you see he'll be the middle but he's just going over so you can have him Either the middle, either in the middle or on the side. He will. F this one will move accordingly if it's on this quick line. So, pretty straightforward. On this side, you then need the gas fuel and the power, and then you can activate this person. So, take the liberty of powering up, of connecting up with power. So, we just need to have the fuel, and I have prepared a little bit of fuel, so we can just directly pipe out from here. And pipe up. Uh, we might need to add a pump to make it go quicker. We don't know yet. Um, <laughs> there we are. We could put a pump here, a volume pump or something. But at least now we can click on this one he's green he's green because there's no error obviously we can then click on this button and a big tube a very straight tube comes out and he connects up lovely that is what we want to see next thing we want to see is the fuel again fuel comes out a pipe comes out and he starts to fill up so now we can actually close this one and we should be able to see him on the computer. Let's first finish off this boy. He wants some cable, of course. And she is an error. He's an error because he doesn't have a computer here. And you select the computer. So here you would probably name that link up there. I haven't done it because I only have one rocket, but you could name him Minor Rocket or whatever. And then you can actually communicate to him. So we need a computer. Do we have a computer somewhere? No, we don't. Computer. And we need a motherboard as well. Motherboard. Motherboard for the rocket. Rocket. As you of course can see, I am in the testing mode, so I don't really care about how things are built. This is just to learn about the rocket. Lovely. Computer built. Next thing we want some cable. And we want him. Uh -huh. So, while we are filling him, we should be filling, let me just have a look. So you see, now it's going down and it's going into the rocket. Now, while he's filling up both power and fuel, let's have a look at this new UI thing. So, click on this tiny button here that could make it bigger. The same, they could make a big button, they have a big screen, but yeah. So, we have now a complete UI 
interface for the rocket. The majority of handling for your rocket it happens in this UI. You have three screens, three different window tabs. The first one is the rocket. This is your rocket that you're on. We only have one, but it's this one. I haven't figured out how to change this name yet, which would be very nice to be able to do. If anybody knows how to do it, please let me know because I really want to change it, but I cannot see anywhere that I can do it. Anyway, <clears throat> doesn't matter right now. Here you can see a bit about what the rocket is doing. So you can see the current location, launch, launch mount, makes sense, that's where it is. Tag location, we haven't set any, so it doesn't have any. ETA, so estimate time of arrival, for those who didn't know, in seconds. It usually takes like hundreds of seconds to get somewhere. And the next target, basically what that means, the next target, is that if you say you're on an asteroid field and you set the location to home, then it can go past multiple different sections before it arrives to home. So you don't have to say, okay, go now to Mars, then go, uh, go now to Mars orbit, and then go home. You, you can say, go home. So that's why, okay, next time we're here, and then we're here, and then we're here. So this one will be different than that. Could, could be different. These two don't need to be the same. The rest is basically changing all the time during flight. Like fuel time, it's very important that you know so you don't fly, run out of fuel. Acceleration <coughs> will go up as, as, as we take off and we fly. And the energy velocity and all this will, will difference, differ between where you are. The ground speed velocity is the speed compared to ground, of course. The altitude is actually quite important. Then you can see how far we are from landing. The mass will be changing depending on how much fuel and ores that's inside the, 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 the rocket. But don't make it too big because that will require a lot of fuel, I think. Now, this is something you will play around with as you go on. It's not it's just for your information. And the same thing you have over here. Over here you have all the different IOs, you, uh, IO things you also can put on screens if you want to, if you're that crazy. Of course you are, it's a station, yes, you want to do everything automatically. Um, you have a event lock, or a debug, debug lock, or error lock, or whatever you want to call it. It's an event lock, it's, it's a lock of what's happening. So you see, when it, we turn on, it has run out of fuel, it's run out of depleted batteries, and it says it twice. Why it says it twice? Who knows, but it did. You can clear it, so you see, okay, since last time there's been no errors. Next thing, you can set when should we start optimal, uh, when should we start landing procedure. So when you set it to go home, it will fly until a certain height, and then you go into landing um, stage. The higher this is, the longer it will take for it to land. It will take a very long time if you set it to max. If you have it to uh, optimal, to, uh, if you have 25 and it says very, very high up here, then it, there's a good chance it'll come back successfully. If it's anything else than very high, there is a chance you'll have a crash. And there's always a chance you'll have a crash, but just to know. You know we have two batteries on board. Let's just see if we can change the name on one of them. That was too much I removed there. Okay. Let's change the name to battery UPS for oops for backup basically. Let's build this one now. So let's go back in. So as you can see now, I've changed the name to UPS, means that you can always change the name, and this is the, all the things inside the rocket itself. <laughs> While it, while you're flying, you might leave this window and you don't want to look at it. You can actually turn one of the batteries off so you have all this power to fly home. That could be a good idea to have some backup. <clears throat> but over here, you have the screen thing that you can click on. That is the on-off switch. That's why you don't need them on the, on, the, on the actual rocket. You don't need to see them. If you turn on the engine, I'm not going to do that, then it'll fly. And it will fly away for whatever time. So you can, and, and you wouldn't need to, you wouldn't like to do this without having said this. You can do, but don't really want to. 
Same thing, you see the scanner, and the engine are the two only things right now that's off. The downlink and the tank you cannot turn off because it's, it, that's pointless. And I'm wondering why we're not charging. Oh, we are charging, okay. Just go very slow. But down here, you can see we are charging the batteries. We're charging how much fuel we have inside. And we can also see over here, if you turn on the light, that we're getting fuel. But it takes very long time. But it is filling up. You want to see over in this side. Where is it? Where is it? Uh huh. Ah, yeah, tank. You clear the tank, you can see how much is inside it in moles and volume. You can see all the normal things you can see on the actual thing. <clears throat> Right, so enough bladdering around on this one. So the last three things on this is you can abandon it. So if you know it's lost, you can abandon it. And then you can reuse the, 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 the frame, the, the launch pad. You can see, you can turn off, auto shut off power. And you could auto shut off Outland. If you do auto shut off Outland, you will have to, to deal with it. And it's I, those two just leave them as a standard. Now, the next thing, which is probably the most exciting thing, is the map. <laughs> so this is the current map of the space that I can see. So here, down here, we have the launch pad, launch mount. We can rename him launch mount uh, scanner. And he should be changed in here as well. He's not. Lovely. But here you can see he's at launch mount scanner. And uh, let's see if we can update this. We should be able to update it. Yeah, there we are. Lovely. The launch mount scanner. If you have multiple rockets, they'll be all down here. Because this, this is the surface of Mars. Even though it shows 0.2 Mars, that is the surface, obviously. Then the first thing you can fly to is Mars orbit. So around this lovely rocket, uh, uh, planet. And then from here, you can then search out somewhere. You can see you have a question mark here. You need to figure out what that is. So if you fly to Mars orbit, you can then start to do a scan. That's why we have the scanner with us. So let's see if if we have enough fuel. We have 30, 93% there. We will turn off the UPS, I think. So before we can them off, we need to have more in here. You see, there's almost nothing here. And that's because we don't have a pump. So I'm going to put a volume pump right here to pump in stuff. So we remove that. We're going to pop in a turbo pump. Ah, here we are. Now we pump a little bit more in. He takes a lot of fuel, and you want to give him a lot of fuel so he can stay up for a while. And now he's going up. So we want we want to empty all those canisters. So we'll wait a little bit. Right, so now we have some fuel on him. Good amount. But he's a bit heavier. So you can see this one is actually not that good anymore. But he will still be able to fly. So without further ado, let's set the destination to Mars. To Mars orbit. And... Uh, Let's see what happens. So I have turned off the battery for the oops. So we always have some power. But uh, let's set him off. And and away he is. So he flies much quicker than before. But uh, he will now be on his merry way. You can see him fly here. Decent has decent speed. He will be there in 31 seconds. And uh, we can then see what happens. <coughs> 40 seconds, 20 seconds. You see, his target destination is orbit, and his next destination is also orbit. So that's good. It's going to the same place. <laughs> but you see here, the fuel time is not so high, but it's enough for this trip. Because he's, when he's not moving, he's not using fuel. And touchdown. He has arrived. Good. Okay, so now that we have him in orbit we can select him and we can set chart because we have 
no, we have we know we can charge something here. Right now he's idle, but we want him to charge the, the space around Mars. So we said to charge, but you see nothing is happening. And that is because the scanner is off. You can see here down here, the scanner is unpowered, so it's taking an error. So let's turn on the scanner. And then he'll be scanning. So it takes a bit of time, and technically it's, it, it will require 100 charge point or XP or whatever you want to call it before we can have it fully charted out. We get 30, as you can see, 30 per cycle, and every cycle takes 20 seconds. So it eventually will take a long time. So let's see when this what happens here. And the chart has been completed. Now, lovely. So see, charting process charted. So we have something, we have Phobos, which is 151 light years, or whatever this distance type means, away. So let's go back to the map. You see, oh, we have found a big rock. Set destination, because we see we have three question mark plus a question mark more. Let's turn on the gas pump. And he's flying there. It takes no time whatsoever to fly there, which is really good. And potentially you could see him. It could be that rocket over there, uh, that stone over there he's flying to. And you could maybe even see him up there somewhere. Who knows? But he's up there somewhere. Nice. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> so now you can see he's here. And he has a lot of things to chart. So let's get to chart. So he, what he'll do now, he will start, let's turn on the scan again. <clears throat> oh. Now he'll be start charting out and he will be scanning out these different things to, to, to see what's around. You may want to stop as soon as he reaches 100 or 200, whatever. You can leave him. He's, he's only using a battery right now. We have, and we have a battery in spare. So he's not using a lot. You see he has 97. Uh, 95, he has 97 minutes left, so he has not used that much power. And you could just leave him here as you have content, and you can continue with, for example, this. And I'm building a rocket, a bigger than another rocket, because he is now charging space, and we want to see this with a different rocket and collect stuff. So while off camera, I will finish this so we can. So we don't have to see the whole thing again because it's pretty much the same thing. But I'll then go through what this one is compared to that one. You can use the same launch pad for the same for multiple rockets. I personally don't really like that because if I want to call all of them home, I can. But you can. You can have one launch pad for all the rocket for one rocket or whatever you want. It's up to you. Anyway, now <clears throat> let's now build a mining rocket. And there we have rocket number two. It's one step taller, but apart from that, it's pretty much the same. Well, no, not at all. Um, we have a miner without a hit. Where's the miner hit? It's right there. Let's pop that one on. There we are. So we have a miner. That has a shoot, normal shoot. Goes up to storage. After the storage, we go up to a building cord that goes out for ore. If you're honest, you know. And also the link, I've called it minor. Then we have two tanks for fuel. I'm not sure that's enough, but this one is going to be a little bit heavy, so we'll see. I've just taken one battery. I believe that will be enough. <clears throat> because this one will only be up there until it runs out of battery. It will come home and fill it up. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much So this one is mainly load. It's going to be very heavy. So I'm going to try to see if I can take it off with, with this amount of fuel. But uh, at least now we are filling it up. So let's let's close them off. And yeah. Now rocket five oh hello. Aha, rocket minor one. Ah, that's how we name it. Launchpad minor. Nice, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Well, you learn something up there. I am missing one thing, that's the data link here. Yeah, we just can pop this one down here. 
Da, da, da. Yes, you could technically have the same one flip between them, but I personally would like to be able to see all of them. Um, cable. And we want to cable here. And then this one. There we go. Minor. Turn on. Good. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how it looks in here. So we now have. Let's go in. The, let's first figure out what this one is doing. So this one is currently now he's selected, and he is idle. He has charged everything. That is very good. So we found Deimos, which is a planet rock something. We found some frozen vapors, so ice. <clears throat> we found some metallic. And so we found some rocket asteroid. So the metallic fields, where is that? That must be this. So let's fly out here, have a look. Minor one is depleted batteries. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I'm on that rocket because he's selected here. If I chose this one, you can see I have him chosen. So yeah, that's how you choose it. But I like that I can choose the name, pick the name now. That's really good. Anyway, let's fly out to see if we can find anything out there. So, turn off the scanner. And turn on the engine. <coughs> so, in this current episode, I'm not going to do anything coding-wise with any of the rockets. To show you no. But you could do some code up there. There is a... There is a... There is some code... This one. Circuit house. This one can use for coding of things inside the plane. Like like turning things on and off and stuff. Like this one. Um Okay, let's see. He is now out there. It's a very short trip, as you can see. So he there's we know already now there's some sites and we need to discover them and see what they are. So again, I need to charge. So scan some more. So now that we're scanning down, you can see this one is taking up slowly. And we need this one to take up before we can actually start seeing them. So we are generating and we need to have a hundred to see something out here. So we should be able to see something soon. We see at least one of them. Yeah, there we have one. So we have something here, let deposit. Yeah, we can use that. We don't, we like, the, you, you see, the, the, it's, it's the same thing. Next time and next time and next time, but it's it's more there's more work in mining now than it was before. So let's turn it into idle. Let's choose that lid, set destination, rocket. Turn on the pump, and he flies out there. It takes no time whatsoever. Twelve seconds, so very quick. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we are on this side. It's density, we, we don't know anything yet out here. We know it's lead, but we need to start surveying him. And turn on the scan again. So, basically, ideally, you want to achieve this. By scanning one time, you'll get the composite and the size. Then you'll do another one, you'll get the density. And another one, you then you start doing the richness and so on and so on. So now we have those two. And the longer you have them out here, the better it is to locate and to get it, improve it. And that is why having a scanner ship is a very good thing instead of having a scanner ship and be also being a miner ship. So I, I believe that in a build, you'll have like two scanner ships and several miner. We need more. We need much more. And now you can see we are getting it's getting better and better. And soon we'll be able to send a rocket, our second rocket up, 
Hopefully, uh, uh, let's just find him. What is his status? He is... Failures. Because he's becoming heavier and heavier. Landing aborted. Auto... Uh, uh, we might need to take off already. Okay, we'll send him off and see what happens. He might not come back, who knows. Turn off. Um, yeah. Close that. And close that. Close that. And... Oh. So now that he's ready, we have set target is nice. let's put deposit. Let's see if he will fly. And off he goes. Lovely. Lovely. He's on the way. Now we'll check our mining ship. So this one. And say, hey, you have mined scanned enough out here. You, you you we want you to go home because maybe you're running out of power or whatever. So we set him to fly home. Set destination. And fly. So he'll be home in 70 seconds. Lovely. I hope one day they will have like a parachute thing, so in case they don't land correctly, they can fly down and so we can save materials. That will be quite, but yeah, who knows. But at least now we have two on the other way. So when you look at the big miner, the miner ship here, you can see that if you took optimal, it's actually like a fail landing. If you take medium, moderate chance. If you take high, high. And you take max, it's okay, but it's maybe it's too high, maybe it's too heavy. Who knows? We will find out later. That was beautiful. Perfect landing. Perfect landing. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And we can open up this. And this, lovely, lovely, and he can then charge up, and he's home, he has arrived, that is what we want to see. So, a quick thing, that's, we're almost done for today, <laughs> quick thing, now you have seen, I'm clicking on here to select the different rockets, that is one way to select them, when you when the screen like this, you're on this rocket, however, you can also pick them here, I have not named it that good, so the first one here is just down like uplink rocket miner da 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 da. Next one is rocket. Is that, is she here I'm on the miner and here I'm on the other one. So it doesn't they, they don't really match. But here you can pick between them in a quick way. Just it's it's a good thing to to remember. Um, one what we're gonna do now with this one, is we're gonna start take him and listen to mine. And we're going to turn on the miner. So you can see he's now mining as, as he can. There's an estimated of, of 3,000 ore in this location, and we currently mined 41. So it will actually deplete. It's not an definitive thing anymore, so we can actually run out. But of course, space is huge. Like, it will always be something, I, I, I believe so. <clears throat> if you click on the rocket and you click on the what is it? Storage. There's nothing in the storage because it's not on. There's something in the, the, the miner. And I guess we could actually go with just that. But now we can also start filling up the, the, the small storage. We will see. We will see if the, if how if this build is good. I think it's okay. Maybe it's a bit too heavy. We'll see. Um, we'll take our little rocket and send him on a voyage. We'll want to send him further away. We want to send him to Deimos. Set destination. 
let's just close all this. This should be a launch button. Hmm. And let's send him away. Demos. So while this rock is on the way and this rock is mining away, I will leave them to it and we will continue from here. Next time we will do a little bit more automation to it. We'll see what we can do automation wise and see if we can improve some things. So until next time, have fantastic the rest of your day. Hope you learned a thing or two, had some tips, tricks, whatever. And uh, see you then. Have a great new year, everybody. See you next year. Bye for now.